What's up guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be explaining how tables work inside of Roblox Studio Scripting. Let's get right into it. So if we go over to server script service right here and then open up our scripts that we have right here, we can actually go ahead and get started with tables. So I'm just going to open this up real quick and I'm going to start off with a simple description of tables inside of Roblox Studio. So tables are essential data structures that help you organize and store various pieces of information. Okay. One of the best ways I've come to think about it is to think about it like a shopping cart or even a basket you could say. So let's say I'm walking maybe across a path or maybe I'm in a store itself and you can add different items to your shopping cart or basket. Say you're walking along the road, you could pick up a few flowers or something, put them in your basket. If you're in a store, you could grab the flower off a shelf or whatever and put that in your shopping cart. It's the same way with tables, but in that same way that you can add things to those tables, you can also remove things and find things inside of that table. And we know that each of those items that we put into the shopping cart is going to have a name, a price, and probably a quantity or a serving size or something like that. So in this case, the cart is the table itself and each item you put in it is similar to an element in the table. Now when I say table, I'm not talking about the table that you're probably sitting at right now or a table that you have anywhere around you. I'm talking about a table that we use for code. So it's really easy to create a table in Roblox Studio. We first off just start out with a variable here. I'm just going to name it local player table just like this. And this is going to be equal to curly braces just like this. So this is how we create a table inside of Roblox Studio. Right now, this is what we call a blank table. It has nothing inside of it. It's completely empty because it doesn't have anything inside of it. If we were to go ahead and print out player table and run the game real quick, you can see that it's just gonna print our curly braces because there's nothing actually inside it. But here's where we get to go ahead and add things to it. So inside of these curly braces, if you press enter, now there are two ways to create a table. There's the way to do it like this, which I personally think is a lot better. It just looks a lot more clean. However, it will use up more lines of code. It doesn't really matter. And the other way is just you keep it in this long line right here, but that can get a lot harder to read eventually. So I like to kind of separate it like this. Anyways, I'm gonna talk about different values that we can put inside of tables. And I'm gonna explain a few properties first off. So we can create these properties for our table that we can actually assign values to. I'm going to give this player table a property called name. We're just going to say name and this is going to be equal to something like John or you can put this wherever you want to. Maybe you want it to be Robert. Maybe you want it to be Richard. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It can just be any name you want to. After that, I'm just going to put favorite food is going to be equal to apples. And I forgot we need to put a comma after each of these different properties right here. And then for last one, I'm just going to say score will be equal to 100, just like this. And now, and now that I think about it, let's also put a boolean in here. And we're just going to put, I don't know, let's just put plays Roblox. And this is going to be equal to true. So we have all these different properties inside of this player table now. And this is cool because we can actually access these elements or properties that we have inside of here. So to access these properties that we have inside of here, we can just use a dot and after our player table variable right here. I'm just going to be using this print statement right here as an example. But if I say dot after this, you can say that the properties that we just made come up. So if I were to write print player table dot name and then run this you can see that it's going to print out John inside of the output and that's because we printed out this property just like that and we can do this with all the other properties too we can print out player table dot favorite food we can print out player table dot plays roblox and it'll print out all of these different values that we have other thing though is that we can actually change the value of items here so let's say we print uh, player table dot plays roblox and then we say player table dot plays roblox will be equal to false now and then we can print player table dot plays roblox so we're going to be printing it out before we change the value and then we're going to be printing it out after we change the value so let's click on run real quick and you can see it's going to be true before we change the value and then false after we change the value. So you can see that we can actually change the value of the properties after they've already been created inside of the table. Another thing that you can do is you can actually create tables inside of a table. 
let's say I had an inventory for the player and this is going to be equal to a brand new table and I could say weapon will be equal to sword and I can have gun will be equal to let's just go for a rifle right here I forgot a comma right there but you can see that we can have multiple tables inside of tables as well and we can access those by using the same player table dot inventory and we can do dot weapon from there and all of these cool properties just like that so let's say we want to remove one of these properties from our table where we can easily just say player table dot inventory dot weapon is going to be equal to nil instead of false real quick and when we run this well instead of printing player table dot plays roblox it's going to error because we haven't actually got that plays roblox value or property inside of here yet or we don't have it anymore i mean to say but we can easily just change this to inventory dot weapon and I'll just copy and paste this print statement down below and let's run it now. So you can see it's going to be sword and that's going to be nil just like this. And if we printed out the table itself, just the inventory table right here, we can see everything that's inside of it. So let's open up the first one. We have gun and weapon. And if we open up the second one, you can see that we just have gun because we removed the weapon. So that's pretty much everything there is about properties inside of tables, but I want to go over a few different things with tables now. So let me get rid of all this stuff right here and even this table inside of our other table real quick, just like this. So I'm going to create a few values inside of here and these are going to be unnamed. So they're not going to be properties. They're just values that are going to be inside of our table. And this I'm going to rename to fruits table. And this is going to hold all of our different fruits. I want an apple inside of here. I want a banana inside of here. And then let's say I want a cherry inside of here. So we've got all sorts of different fruits inside of here. Well, you can see that now we can't really just say fruits table dot anything because these don't have a name and they're not actually properties. They're just values inside of the table. So we can't really access them at all unless we do something called indexing. And this is where we simply use square brackets right here and we follow with a number inside of here. And this is going to get the index or the position of the item that's inside of the table. So if I were to say fruits table one right here, in fact, let's put it inside of a print statement real quick. We're going to say fruits table square brackets one. So if I were to run this real quick, you can see in the output, it's going to say apple because this one right here is getting the first item inside of our table. The very first position or the first index. If I were just to print out fruits table itself, right here, you can see down here, it's going to give us all three of these things. And you can see it's got the name or the value right here. And that has this thing, which is called the index. It's kind of the position or the order in which it's in. It'll, it'll go, from one all the way up to however many values you have inside of here. So whether that be one, two, three, four, whatever. So yeah, that's pretty cool. But we're not just limited to accessing and using and changing the values that we already have inside of this table. We can actually add things to tables. So if I were to get rid of this print statement, we can use something called table, which is a library of table functions. This holds all the different table functions inside of it. And we can use table.insert. And what this is going to do is that we can insert a certain value into a table. So what this will take inside of the parentheses right here is first off, it's going to need the table that's going to be inserting values inside of. So in this case, I'm going to choose the fruits table and the table will always be the first value inside of here that you're going to be passing through the table insert function. And then we simply put a comma right here and this is the value that we want to add. So I'm going to write orange because I want to add this orange to this table, just like that. So once again, let's print out fruits table beforehand and then print out fruits table afterwards. And we can see that orange will be added afterwards before we actually go ahead and add all that stuff. So looking on the first table, you can see we only have apple, banana and cherry. But in the second table, we have apple, banana, cherry and now orange. And you can see that not only did it add an extra comma for us right here after the cherry, 
but it also added another number for us in the index, which is very, very cool. So now that we've actually added something to our table, we can actually now go ahead and remove something just as we did with the properties, except instead of setting something to nil, we actually use the same table library right here, but with a different move. And this is going to be table dot remove just like this and once again the first thing we pass through is going to be the table that we want to remove something from in this case i'm going to put the fruits table just like this and then you'll notice that we actually need a position or an index from the array or table that we have right up here now you'll notice that we didn't have to supply an index over to our table.insert function right here. That's because all we're doing is adding something to the table. We're just adding a value in here. It's just gonna go ahead and add the orange right here. We need to provide the position or the index of the element that's actually going to be removed. And how we do that is we either supply a number, which is the number of which the index is itself. Like for Apple, we would simply just put one right here and that would remove the apple from the table. If we wanted to remove the banana, we could do two and the cherry for three. However, this becomes a problem simply because if you were to add multiple values inside of the table at once, it gets very hard to keep track of. So there's a better way that we can do that by using something we call table.find. Now, what this does is we had the table.insert function. This is going to insert something into the table and the table.remove function is going to remove something from the table. However, table.find, this is going to find something that's inside of a table. And if I were to start off with the table that I want to search through once again, so this is going to be the fruits table, then what we want to do is we need to provide the needle or the haystack, which is the table, or in this case, we need to provide the item that we're searching for. So in this case, I want to be searching for orange. So what this is going to do is going to find orange within the table and we know orange is going to be added right here and that's pretty cool. So what we can do is we can put this inside of an if statement. So if table.find fruits table orange, then we can go ahead and print orange was in the table. Else we can print orange was not in the table. So if we were to run this, all right, so it's saying orange was not in the table because I forgot that we just removed the orange from the table itself right here. So I'm just gonna get rid of that remove function and now we can print that orange was in the table right here. And you can see the orange is in fact inside the table. So that is pretty cool. That's how we use table.find, table.remove, and table.insert. Another thing I want you guys to know though is that we can use table.find inside of a table.remove and that's going to help us make sure that we find the right index of the actual item itself. So if I were to say table.remove, I want to remove something from the fruits table so I say the fruit table itself, but now we need to find the index of the element actually being removed. So that's why we say table.find and we're going to provide the table that we're going to search through, which is the fruits table. And then we're going to provide the thing that we're searching for, which in this case, I'm going to change over to cherry, in fact, just for a little change of scenery. So what this is going to do is going to find the cherry value inside of the fruits table. And if it's there, which we know it is already there, that's going to remove it basically. So I just want to add a print statement right here. And we're going to print fruits table one more time. Let's click on run real quick. And you can see down here on the bottom table, it has removed cherry completely because we found it inside the table. So I've just got rid of all the other things that we had inside of here other than our fruits table because there's something I want to explain real quick. And that's when we use table.find, let me put it inside of a print statement real quick and we're going to print table.find. That's going to be our fruits table and we're going to search for our cherry right here. So what's gonna happen when we print this out, instead of actually printing out cherry or true because it actually found it, what's going to do is going to provide the index at which this cherry was found. So we already know cherries in the third index right here. Let's go ahead and run it just to make sure. You can see it's going to print out three because that's what table.find does. It returns the index of the thing that it found. So in this case, cherry is the third index and it's going to print out three. That is why we're able to use it in table.remove. 
and let me just put the fruits table right here and that's because it actually returned the index or the position of which something is in let me know if that makes sense anyways guys i'm just going to make sure that we add in table dot insert our fruits table and we're going to make sure that subscribe is in there anyways guys just as this table says right here let's go ahead and print out the fruits table make sure you like subscribe and comment down below right here and i'll make sure to see you in the next video anyways goodbye